Origami, the art of creating complex three-dimensional geometric figures from paper, is an ancient Asian tradition. Now this centuries-old art form is inspiring a new area of science. DNA origami, in which Swedish scientist Björn Högberg is a world leader. Ja, bollen är lite mer sånt som vi använder just för att göra till exempel kapslar, leverera läkemedel och det är tanken någon gång framtid. Just nu håller vi inte egentligen på med det så mycket. Så so DNA origami is a method to fold DNA. We fold the DNA into specific shapes that we then use in, the, in different types of research applications. But the, the idea is basically that we're using the DNA as a building material and not as a genetic material. Close up, they may look like a bunch of uncooked noodles. But by folding the DNA structures in the right places, Bjorn can create virtually any shape he wants. Eventually, this DNA origami may lead to new opportunities in nanomedicine, like finding and eradicating cancer cells in the body. But Björn Högberg is becoming one of our top researchers in biomedicine was really mostly a coincidence. I originally was very interested in research because when I grew up I read a lot about space and astronomy and uh, my undergraduate I was doing physics. And uh, when I finished that I actually started in a lab working on superconductors at Chalmers University in, in, in Göteborg. Unfortunately my, my supervisor died and uh, my wife got a job in Sundsvall at Mid Sweden University and we started to think about other ways of building stuff on the nanoscales. So that was the start and since then and in particular for my postdoc and onwards I've been working mostly with just DNA and much more into biological applications of, of these types of devices. Bjorn was recruited by the Karolinska Institute in 2010 after, among other things, spending three years at Harvard University. And here today, he leads a research group devoted exclusively to nanotechnology with biological applications. Within this field of research today, their approach is actually quite unique. So the unique thing that we are doing is that we are applying DNA nanostructures to look at biological problems. Classical style DNA origami, you have to add a lot of extra salts like magnesium in order to keep them stable. So in our structures that we have developed these polygonal shapes, they are much more resistant to low salt concentrations and to other types of salts that we find in the body. We, we also are developing new types of structures that are pretty unique and that are especially well suited for the biological applications that we are trying to implement. So how is this actually achieved? To build objects which are so small that it takes an electron microscope to see them. What we do is you sit down at our computers and we draw the overall shape of the structure. And then we have this algorithm that calculates exactly how the long single strand DNA molecule, the scaffold, how that will arrange itself on the surface of the structure. And this will also automatically calculate all the short DNA strands that we need, all these uh, staple uh, DNA strands. The only thing you need to do is to make this shape of the structure. And this is the final model that we have here. And then we order them from a DNA synthesizing facility. What we do is we take all of those samples and we pool them together with a pipette. And then we put it on thermal block, we heat it up, and uh, cool it down overnight. And then we have the, the folded structure, so everything folds by itself in the test tube. There is something almost magical about the process. In just a few hours, hundreds of DNA strands will self-assemble and form the shape that Bjorn rendered on his computer earlier. These nucleotides that make up the DNA 
uh, they attach to each other in a very controllable and specific manner. So A always attaches to T and C always attaches to, to G. So in that way you can predict and program the way that they attach to each other in a very, very precise manner. In the long run, scientists believe that we could design so-called nanorobots to perform all sorts of tasks in our bodies. And Bjorn Högberg's DNA origami might be an important step on this path. To me, a nanorobot is something that could potentially go into the body, find a diseased cell, and then only then open up and deliver its cargo of drugs. There are numerous hurdles they need to be able to be stable enough to survive long enough to do blood circulation and they need to be not cleared by all the defenses that we have inside the body, which we've only sort of begun to scratch at the surface of this problem. But I'm very hopeful that we will, in the near future, have uh, a very nice application for, for the DNA origami. Should I throw it? Yes, please. The future is sometimes likened to a blank sheet of paper, but for Bjorn Herberg, this adage has even more meaning. Because he knows that with the right knowledge, you can shape that paper into almost anything.